uh, I want us just to look at the app and we're going to jump from a uh, back and forth uh, uh, from the editor to the published version because um, PCF components actually don't uh, don't work in the editor. So we need to jump it back and forth to, to look at the code. So first of all, welcome and thanks for the opportunity to, to, to be here. Um, I have a topic that I really, really love and it's SVGs in Power Apps because they spice up every app a little bit. You probably shouldn't uh, use them as much as are used in this app, but um, here and there, like uh, a little chart or something that is animated, really um, spices up your app a lot and helps a lot. And I want to really uh, feel or get a good impression what they can do for, for your apps. Um, so we do it all in this app and the app is downloadable in my GitHub with all the data um, inside the app. So uh, I think Todd will, will share the source uh, in the end. So if you like it, you can download it. And um, I separated this uh, whole stuff in six levels and we're adding another layer, another layer and another layer of what you can do with SVGs. And then you can yeah, start exploring them yourself afterwards. First of all, a little bit about me and this is our first level, just integrating a, a SVG image that is uploaded to your app in an image control. Really easy way, you probably all have done it before. Uh, this is the company I work for, ENBW, a uh, company in, in Germany, we are an um, energy company. And uh, there I'm a power platform enabler. I'm enabling and coaching colleagues in using Power Apps, Power Automate and Power BI. And I'm also a YouTuber and enabling the rest of the world in my uh, free time making YouTube videos. Um, and the second level is um, using SVG source code in an image control and making the Power App controls changing something in that source code and we'll look a lot um, at that. And the third level you've probably seen right here is adding a layer of animation in that SVG source code. So this is not done by a timer control, but in SVG it's uh, much easier and uh, better to do. So we'll have a look at that. And the next um, layer, the next level will be using a really boring command, the concat command. I don't know how often you use it. And if you think it is exciting when you use it with SVGs, it is because it allows us to create maps, charts, animations, much, much more. And yeah, if this hasn't been enough, then um, what we were doing uh, in the last minutes was giving information into an image. But uh, of course, in a normal Power App control, it isn't possible to get information back from your image control. You can click on it and that's it. But in SVGs and in changing SVGs especially, yeah, it would be, many people told me for a year and a half, hey, it would be so cool if I can click on something in the SVG and somehow get the inf uh, information out. So um, when Pranav did his uh, wish list app, I uh, did a PCF control who does exactly that, um, spent my whole holidays um, working on this component because now you can click on stuff in your SVGs and get information of the element that we, we were clicking on. And the PCF I'm working on right now um, has even more stuff it can do because it can, for example, add drag and drop functionality to Power Apps, which is something that is really uh, painfully missing in Power Apps. And yeah, I think I found a way to um, get it working uh, on a level you can you can use it for yeah, probably everything. So we take a look at uh, all that in the end. And first of all, we are taking a look at what are SVGs. SVGs stand for scalable, scalable vector graphic. And when we zoom in these two images, this is a PNG and SVG. Um, we can see the difference. When we zoom in really closely in the PNG image, you see it, it consists of different pixels. And if you zoom in too close, then you see the single pixels. In an SVG pixel, if your monitor is uh, good enough, you will never see, never see a single picture because you give information in and not pixel by pixel, but you tell the computer how your image is constructed. So you tell them where a line starts, where a line ends, where there are curves in the line and which colors it has. So in the second level, we need to change to the editor right now. 
there we want to look at how this works. So this the next level is SVGs and Power Apps. How does the source code look like? And uh, you will see it's actually quite easy to, to read. Um, this is an image control because um, it's named I'm an image control. And normally you put um, something in there that is in your media uploaded. So you say logo and then it puts my logo up there or my, my thumbnail. Um, but you can also say to Power Apps, um, yeah, I want to put um, SVG source code in there. SVG source code is a lot like HTML code. Uh, it's also um, XML based, but we say it's a different XML namespace. It's the SVG namespace, and uh, we use this header. And then Power Apps now knows how to interpret it and uh, displays images. And let's let's take a look at a few lines of code. Um, of course, you have to know your ins and outs, how to write the code, but it's actually really easy to read. Because we can see here, this is a rectangle, uh, has, has a width of, of 20 pixels, um, is filled white and has a, a stroke of red. So it has a red border. And you see this is this rectangle um, out of here. And next part, we're actually um, bringing information from the Power App inside uh, to the image. So we're saying this is a circle. Um, we say where it's positioned. And then we have a flexible radius. So the radius is, um, is altered by my slider right here. And let's take a look how this works. Can make our circle bigger and smaller. And as you saw, just one line of code, really easy to use. We can do the same for, for different stuff. And of course, for different properties and whole SVG code right here. And we can yeah, get even more complex shapes. So we can uh, get a whole dinosaur in right here. We'll take a look at that in a second and some rotation for good measure. As you can see here, this all is just a long, long string for Power Apps. So we're passing, just passing in text and we're using the same techniques we're using on labels. So um, breaking the text by double quotes and then adding some some value from outside of the app. And this is actually my, my dinosaur, and this is a SVG element that is used a lot, the path element, which just says from one point to the next um, how this image is constructed, and you can even do crazy curves uh, and stuff. I don't know how, how all of this works because basically you're um, copying the code somewhere from the internet, and this dinosaur actually is a rip off from uh, PowerPoint because PowerPoint icons are a great source for, um, for SVG images. Yeah, let's get a little bit more creative with this. So when we are, can load our dinosaur again, choose a color, load a comet, turn on epic effects. Ah, I did share my sound. sound. Uh, launch the comet. And this is all just with Power Apps controls. There's, Right now, there is, uh, no, uh, there is no animation on SVG level right here. It's just a timer control um, that controls the X and Y position of the comet. And animation is, is the next uh, level we are looking at right now. And uh, as you can see here, this is not controlled. Or you can't see it, but uh, we will look at the code in a second. This is not controlled by a timer control. This is uh, SVG code that is moving this SVG circle right here. And we can change the speed to make it faster or slower. And we can add some other animations. I'll make it a little bit slower. And you can see the code to animate it right here. But we'll uh, take a look at the code for a second. So this is the moving left to right part. And again, really easy to, to write. It's just four lines of codes, and it's um, really uh, easy to, to read as well, because every, everybody of you will get what this does. This translates from X position 200 to 1,800 and back to 200. And here we are um, changing the speed um, where, where this works. And here we can yeah, select some other animation and every anim animation, just four lines of code. So we are turning the heat up a little bit more with maps and charts, which actually is my favorite topic. And you see me a lot posting about uh, maps and 
all my PCF components are based around maps um, as well. And Robin, I, uh, I thought it was really funny how you talked about the animation on Twitter and you or so I thought, yeah, I think that's where you put it. And you said you could fit the animation code in the course of a Twitter yeah. tweet. That's how small it is and easy. I thought that was a great point to make how easy yeah, it is I, to do. I did it for, for this map and I, I left it uh, up here because um, with the concrete. Oh, yeah, command, right there, right there. Stuff okay. like this yeah. is really easy. And this is just. This whole map is just one line of code um, we're going to look crazy. at right now. Because the, the gray map you see, make it a little bit smaller, don't spoil anything. Ah. Um, the whole gray map is, is just this line of code. And this is where the power of the concat command comes in right here. Because as I said, this is all just one large string for Power Apps. And with the concat command, of course, we can do uh, lots and lots uh, of, of strings and put it uh, together. So I have a collection right here. Let's take a look at it. And inside of the collection, there's um, what you saw in the path from the dinosaur earlier. So it's um, coordinates for a path element. And just drop it in here and repeat that for all the 16 uh, states of, of Germany. And then we say they all have the same fill color, stroke width, and stroke. And then we have a map of Germany in one um, in just one line of code. And we can do even more crazy stuff with it and turn it into a chart because uh, using the animation again, and this is just a map, not that much of code. And we just because we know in the collection, which is the population, um, yeah, divided by the maximum population and then change the opacity based on that. And with, uh, as you saw, animation again, four lines of code, really easy to, to do. And yeah, you can do it for the 50 states of the US. I have a YouTube um, video where you, can, where you can turn every shape file into an SVG file and then use it in, in Power Apps. Really easy stuff um, and free shape files are everywhere, shape files of everything that you can uh, that you can think of like um, different states or, or rivers, cities, everything. You can find everything. And yeah, this another chart, another concat command, the same collection, uh, but just displaying the labels, displaying a rectangle, um, which changes the size based on the population again and using the same colors as here. So as I said in the beginning, uh, we were all the time passing information to the image control, uh, but the user experience really gets better if we can get information out of the um, out of the out of the map or out of the SVG. And yeah, this is where my PCF really comes in handy because you all need uh, you all know the concept of cascading dropdowns. When I select um, like my home state. And this is where I live. But um, if we do it the other way around, can just select it on the map. And it's much faster, much more intuitive um, for, for the user. And what is happening here, the PCF actually just uh, gives out very little information. And we have a perfect synergy um, between Power Apps and the, the PCF because all this PCF gives out is uh, the tooltip basically you you um, you see here. Then it triggers a refresh button right here, and then the all other all the other stuff is is uh, happening. The SVG image changes. This little M uh, SVG image here um, comes comes in. So PCF actually is really easy. It's just. 200 lines of code. I have a detailed video about uh, that and you can download it and use it. And it's actually really easy to, to use in your app. Just um, have to say this SVG element has a class of selectable element and you need to specify an ID and then it passes this ID back to Power Apps and you can use it for everything you like. And for the last part, um, yeah. We get a little bit more funky. Um, I'm still working on that uh, PCF. It's not uh, yeah, quite quite there yet, but um, will come to life in a few weeks. Where we actually again 
we, we get really little information out of it, but we can do great stuff with it with a little bit of creativity. Um, we can, as you saw in the beginning, can drag and drop stuff. And then we, we drop it. And then again, in Power Apps, we are looking for the nearest city. The um, thing that my PCF tells to the app is just where did I start to drag the object and where does the drag end? And then in Power Apps, we are calculating, we have a list of cities right here. We're calculating which is the nearest city and, um, and can drop it there again. And I did a little debug right here. And this is all that the PCF is giving back to, to Power Apps. And we can use it for other stuff. We can select graphically, select stuff. Again, the, the rectangle is inside the PCF. But then again, we are calculating stuff in our Power App and changing the SVG image, highlighting the cities that are marked, and can do whatever we want with that. And I think this has uh, some great potential for all the guys of you. I know you're doing, trying to get uh, games, games going in Power App has lots of poten potential for that and um, even for, for serious use cases. I have a few resources for you. I think Todd will show them in a minute um, where you can find the presentation, where you can find my YouTube channel, um, where I have hours of videos about SVGs and hope I sparked your interest in that topic and make your, um, make your apps a little bit more interesting, more colorful and more interactive for the people that uh, work with them. Yeah, thanks for listening. That's it for my presentations. Thanks, Robin. That was fantastic. Lots, lots of uh, like incredible positive feedback in the chat. I'm not sure if you had your eye on it or not. This, the drag and drop one right here at the end really blew my mind. That's amazing. Very cool. So you've been working on. I, I'm just always amazed, like how everyone can find some way to extend power apps in a way we haven't seen. Like. Every month, somebody's like, oh, look what I can do with it. This is just another awesome example of that. What kind of apps are you going to build this into right now? You, you have something in mind in particular? Uh, well, the most important thing will be my uh, my five-year-old daughter wants an app for, for her birthday where she can drag and drop a unicorn through a castle or something along the way. Um, I have... Wait, I can I can hold it in the in the camera. I have a sketch actually what the app should look like. Don't know yeah. if you see it. Um, I yeah, I definitely have to build um, this by the end of April. So at least then you can expect the PCF <laughs> to uh, to go public. That's awesome. Hey, can you bring that app back and show us once you're done? I think everybody <laughs> would love to see it. When yeah. when it's approved uh, by my daughter, then uh, yeah, I yeah, show. get her permission. <laughs> Perhaps there's a she demo can... extravaganza this year. Yeah, she can come help present. All right. Wow, Robin, that was awesome. Uh, thank you.